The ampersand is a really cool little feature of the English language, as well as many other tongues which use the Latin script. It's a simple little logograph slash symbol we use within the written word to represent an entire word. That word, of course, being and. And, as a word unto itself, is part of a wider group of words which are collectively called conjunctions. Conjunctions as a concept in linguistics is actually pretty big and complex, but when we are first taught about them at school, we are simply told they're a collection of words which bridge two pieces of information together into a single sentence, as opposed to being two separate sentences. We are also taught to never start a sentence with them, well at least I was anyway. Seriously, was this drilled into everyone as a kid? Like, even to this day when I'm reading a book and the sentence starts with one, my child brain kicks in and I'm like, but, but I wasn't told to do this. But you know what, if actual authors can do it, then why can't I? Oh, that's a bit of a weird tangent. I still clearly have some issues from school I need to work on. But there's many conjunction words out there. Seemingly, however, there's five which are seen as the pinnacle of this word class. The aforementioned and, as well as the words of but, or, so, and because. These five simple words crop up all the time within language. Of the five of them, and is by and far the most commonly used, being the fifth most commonly used word according to one ranking. The other four words all appear in the top 100 most used words too, with but at 22, or at 31, so at 41, and because at 94. Make no mistake about it, this little group of words are some of the most commonly occurring in our language, yet only one of them has a quite a neat little symbol for itself. So, why don't we change that? Yeah, this video is a little different to my usual fare. Instead of explaining a word or element of language, this time round I'm creating them. I just think it would be fun if these other conjunction words had their own symbols like and does with its ampersand. Now, in no way am I suggesting we should all start using these or that they're the perfect answer. It's just a fun little exploration as to how we form these symbols. And of course, I could easily just make up symbols out of thin air and call it a day. But I want to do more than that. I want to follow the same path that the ampersand did in regards to how it was created. And we aren't just making up the symbols here. I want to find unique names for them too. Once again, in a similar vein to how we ended up with the ampersand. So, oh, and look just there, I started a sentence with a conjunction. My teacher is going to kill me. But yeah, so how did we end up with the ampersand symbol and that name? Well, you know what? I actually have a whole video on that subject, but to explain it very simply here, the ampersand symbol is a combination of the letters from the Latin word for and, et. The E and T which make up this word merge together over time to give us the symbol we all know today. The name of ampersand meanwhile comes to us from the term of and per se and, which was added to the end of the alphabet, and it means and by itself. And this all stems from when the ampersand was actually considered the last letter of our alphabet. This gives us quite a clear path to follow in regards to making up new symbols for these other conjunctions, as well as making names for them. I also want to add one extra rule too. They have to be easy to write down, like they can't be too complex or anything. Ideally, they should all be achievable with a single stroke of a pen, or apple pen in my case. Actually, you know what? I think they call them apple pencils. Ooh, sorry about that, apple. Hope you're not too angry at me. Why don't we actually dive into this with the second most commonly used conjunction of but. The Latin word for but is the simple word of sed. So this is the base word I decided to use when it came to making a symbol. Of course, if we are following the path of the ampersand, we have to adapt this word in capital letters, as the Romans only had capital letters in their form of the language. Upon looking at this word in caps lock, I was hit by inspiration. I decided to ditch the S entirely and instead focus on just the E and the D. This was primarily because both these letters share that trait of a vertical line on their left hand side. This led to me merging the E and D together to give us a symbol which looks primarily like the letter D but with a horizontal line through the middle of it to represent the E which was once there. This could be a great symbol to represent our word but. Not only does it come from the Latin word for the conjunction but it also looks somewhat like a capital B too which is fitting as but starts with a B. Also it does kind of look like an actual but. 
Like, how perfect is that? It's a shame we have to drop the S entirely from that initial Latin word, but dropping letters and words over centuries is a natural part of language development. Maybe at one point in, say, the Middle Ages, when this symbol was being formed, the S was still there or something. As for a name for this symbol, the one I landed on is the Setum. This is a combination of that Latin word for but, as well as their word of tum, which means things like then, next, and also. So the word means also but, which would fit into that whole idea of it being part of the alphabet, like the ampersand was. The next conjunction I want to cover is or, and despite the whole premise of this video being the fact that these words don't have symbols, or kind of already does have one. A symbol called a descending wedge, which looks a lot like a V, is used in the realm of maths. This is used to mean OR. For example, instead of writing A or B in written algebra, you could write AVB, and it means the same thing. It doesn't mean A and B are about to throw hands or anything like that. There's actually other cases of these conjunctions having symbols in maths we all come across too. But I still want to find a new symbol, however, as these are mainly used in written maths, as opposed to the written word. The thing is, however, this V symbol is kind of already perfect for all, and that's because it comes directly from the Latin word for all, vel. This maths V symbol simply comes from the V at the start of vel. My idea for using vel as the symbol for or would look more like this, a V with an additional line coming down the middle. This would derive from the L at the end of vel. It's a tad more unique looking than just a V, that's for sure, and it also looks like a little bird footprint, which is too cute. But if dumb maths has already given us a symbol using the Latin word, why don't we look into a different language instead? The English or doesn't come from the Latin vel. It is instead of Germanic root, and in Old English, the word looked like this, which means either as well as meaning or. I've looked into how this was pronounced, and according to one really helpful Reddit post, it sounds somewhat like the word other, with the th being a bit softer. This comes down to those two P looking letters in the middle, which is called a fawn. Of course, we don't have this letter in modern English, but why don't we bring it back as our symbol for all? I personally think it already looks a little like an O and an R merged together. From here, I decided to adapt it a little to make it a little more unique, and I came up with this. This symbol comes from the fawn, but I removed the upper part of that vertical line, so it looks even more like an O and R merged together. I did, however, also add that vertical swoosh coming off of it to somewhat represent Vel too, as it helps make the left-hand side look a little bit more like a V. This also helps with quickly writing the symbol down too, something that's important when it comes to these symbols. I would call this symbol a velophorn, which is the combination of Vel, the Latin word for and, et, and fawn, as the symbol is a combination of the symbols. So, we move to so. And once again, we kind of have maths to the rescue. Maths features the therefore symbol, three dots in an upwards triangle position. While this means therefore, this word and so do kind of mean the same thing. So, screw it, we're making up our own one here. And this time around, maths very kindly didn't take the symbol from Latin. So we can use the Latin word for so as our basis, which is sick. This is one of those words that immediately leaped out to me. We take the S and draw it as normal, but at the bottom, instead of ending the letter, we carry on and bring that S almost full circle onto itself until it looks like a C. This not only gives us a perfect combination of an S and a C, but also looks somewhat like the word so unto itself. Like, it's genuinely perfect. I even like the idea of bringing the C across to the rest of the S too. It doesn't look as much like the word so, granted, but it does look more like a symbol we would find in language. For a moment, I thought it might look like a simoleon symbol, but no, that somehow looks more like an S and an O combined. And you know what? A big so so to any Sims enthusiasts watching this video. This new symbol, however, needs a name too. We are once again going to be delving into Latin when it comes to finding a name for this one. And the name I landed on is the Signum. The first part of this name, of course, comes from the Latin word for so, sick. But the latter part comes from the Latin word of signum, which means things like sign and signal. Not only does the latter part come from this word, but that word I just coined of signum is the same, minus changing the G to a C. This basically means the so sign, a very fitting name as this is literally a sign that means so. You know, I feel I'm being a bit lazy with some of these names for these symbols, but remember, the name of the ampersand is literally just a truncation of a few words, and I'm merely following in its footsteps. And finally, we ought to look into that word of because. 
This is by and far the largest of the popular conjunctions. While all the other ones consist of two to three letters and a single syllable, because is a massive seven letters long and features two whole syllables. Talk about saving the best for last, right? Maths once again actually is given as a symbol for because. Remember the therefore symbol I mentioned earlier? Well, imagine that, but upside down. This means because in mass language. Yeah, I really shouldn't have leaned into that whole these words don't have symbols angle so earlier in this video because that actually isn't the case at all. But we're name explained, not number explained, so they can go to hell. These three little dots obviously don't come from Latin either, as the Latin word for because is propter. This is also seven letters long and suffice to say, merging seven letters into a single symbol is a tad trickier than just two or three. The best I've come up with is this guy. When I first wrote it, it looked more akin to a P with two semicircles. This was to represent the two P's in the word propter. I however added that diagonal line to represent the R at the end of the word too. This also made the lower semicircle of the P look more like the top of a capital R, which is an added bonus. But altogether, not only does it look like a merged P and R, the top bit looks like a capital B, fitting as our word of because starts with one. It's a little complex that's for sure, but I imagine over time people would adapt it as they scribble it down quicker. When experimenting and writing down these symbols, one time I did this because symbol, it looked like a lowercase k, but different enough I feel. As for the name for this one, let's go with perpropter. We see the word propter in this name along with the Latin word of per, which means by. This Latin per word can also kind of mean also too, so the word means also propter in the same vein of it appearing at the end of the alphabet, like we see with the word ampersand. But the key reason I use this word is due to it meaning by, as our English word of because comes from compounding the words of by and cause together, so it just seemed really fitting. These give our good friend the ampersand a handful of new friends, the sedtum, the velophorn, the signum, and the propopter, allowing these five popular conjunction words to all have neat little symbols of their own. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I don't imagine these will be used widely in language, nor do I think they're perfect in any way, shape or form. If you have any interesting ideas as to what symbols for these words could look like, please let me know down below. I just think it's about time the ampersand found some friends. Or maybe it likes being a lone wolf, who knows. But if history took a different path, and these other conjunction words ended up with symbols in the same way the ampersand has one, this is, potentially, what they might look like. But that's just what I think anyway. And yeah, I just started another sentence with a conjunction again. So sorry to my English teacher if you're somehow watching this. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon. So a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.